This week on What's Good Cape Cod, we talk about an entrepreneur's best friend, a colorful way to give back, and the most expensive free eggs you'll ever eat. I'm Sarah Lapsy Martin. And I'm Katie Clancy. Welcome back to What's Good Cape Cod, where we show you Cape Cod through the eyes of a couple of locals. And every Tuesday, we drop a new video that tells you about a person, place, and thing we think you should know about. So yes, so the person this week is Jen Rose. She owns uh, Back Office Resources. And what she does is she's basically a virtual assistant, remote uh, admin- administrative support for sm- small business owners, entrepreneurs. Um, and I, I love what she does. I love the fact that she exists here in Cape Cod, because when you think about it, like, Sarah, you and I are entrepreneurs. We're small yeah. business owners. Like, we are good at, like, buying and selling houses, working with our clients and all that stuff. But then we have to spend all this time working on our like books and our administrative stuff and all of that, you know, paperwork pushing that is not really why we got into the business. No, And that's not being out in the field and helping people. That's all the stuff you have to do. (laughs) Totally. And this is a service that I think is, it's so exciting because she, in her, um, if you go to jrosebackoffice.com, you can see what what we see. She is the person that, so let's say you are a builder or you want to be a builder. You're going to start this construction business and you want to get, you're really good at swinging a hammer. You great. You can draw plans. You're great with customers, all that stuff. But then you realize, oh my gosh, I have to spend all this time on like writing proposals. I have to spend time on collecting money, writing bills, paying bills, yep. making sure my license is in order, sending out new newsletters, mailings, all that stuff like marketing. You've got to go out and get the marketing. Business. Right. Yeah. She handles that stuff wow. as a virtual assistant. What a gift. Like so awesome. And she never has to be in your office. So you don't have to like take on this whole new employee. You right. can just bring her on as a virtual assistant. And virtual assistants have actually been in the real estate space for a long time. Right. Um, but I just I love that she's here. She's here. I think that's she, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She's her. local. She's remote, but she's not real. Like if you actually want to meet her in person, you can. Um, but definitely go check her out. jrosebackoffice.com. We'll include her, you know, links to her stuff. Um, and uh, I, you will, you will thank us for that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, that Jen's our person. Who was our, yes. what's our place this week? So our place this week is glass over tea kettle. Um, so this is a local maker. I love these ladies. It's Monica and Candice Collier. They're owners and artists. And what they do is they make beautiful stained glass art. Um, one of the things that I thought was really you know, fun when I was searching them was that they said they challenged the norms of this ancient art form to move stained glass away from, you know, typical just church windows into modern home decor. Mm -hmm. Um, What they do is it's truly amazing and beautiful and one of a kind. They actually hand draw their own patterns. Each piece of glass is hand cut by them. Um, So they're just really, I, I just love their work. And one of the really cool things, actually, they just had one of their pieces selected to be hung at the Katuit Center of the Arts. So they have an oh, abstract cool. show there. Yeah. And this will show a picture of it. It's called Blue Dream. It's like an abstract wave. It's absolutely stunning that these ladies made. Um, and they're gla- their, their artwork is beautiful. It's amazing that it's hung in this local museum, but they're also giving back, which is what I really like about them. Um, they are a zero waste. So instead of having, you know, their glass scrapes go to a landfill, they get saved. And what they've been doing, I actually have one here. They're creating special ornaments and the proceeds are donated to different charities throughout the year. So show me one of their hearts. Let's see. So those are, those are glass scraps. These are all glass scraps and they put it into this heart. I have a few of them actually. So, um, so when I first bought this, it, they're called helping hearts. I should say that. And so when I first bought it, they were giving back to one of their Afghan friends who was in cabal and their family, um, he had raised 2,300, dollars for him, which was great. Oh. Now the donations are going to the Cape Cod Resilience Fund, which we've talked about on here before, but for people that don't know it, it helps small businesses on the Cape facing economic hardship due to COVID-19. So that's where they're giving it to now, but they're going to be changing it. So it's a rotation. Um, you can, you know, check them out on Etsy. They have their work in small, small gift shops around here, like the Love Local Collective in Hyannis. Yeah, that there. was where I first saw them. Yeah. yeah. And they're, and they're at the Love Local Fest. Um, so just really cool. And I love this, that there's zero waste and they're giving back. That's just, that's awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, so there's our place. So our thing this week is a, a one, something that's very near and dear to my heart and to my house, and it is backyard chickens. So it is one of the things that I did during COVID was we got chickens after I feel like my daughter, everyone though was like, I if, feel like but I, n- I never made like, sourdough bread. I never, I didn't get pregnant. Yeah. What else did I not do that? Well, lots of people did. got chickens. I feel like it was a thing. You know? They did. It was, yeah. it's, it was such a big thing that it was actually featured in um, Cape Cod, the islands magazine. Yes. And actually a really beautiful article. I love uh, that article ab- about them. And these, these chickens are actually the, at least the ones that are photographed are actually from Eric's own backyard. Yeah. None of my chickens, unfortunately made the magazine. I think actually it was shot before I had my chickens. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so I have them. There's a few things that I wish I had known. Um, and a few places that, that I was really glad to be able to, to get res- you know information from. First yeah. of all, You probably know someone who has chickens. So if you're thinking about getting chickens, talk to your chicken owning friends first. Mm -hmm. Second, make sure that you've got you. So when you see those like coops that they sell at, so we got our chickens at Agway, which I highly recommend Agway of Cape Cod as little baby chicks. They were so Um, cute. We went to see the little chicks and they, I mean, they were so adorable. (laughs) So cute. They get ugly real fast. I would have bought That's another thing. So (laughs) Chicks get ugly real fast. Just like people, chicks go through an adolescence and they get like, like like half chicken, like half, half like feathers, half fluff. And they're like, they're not, they don't, they sound weird. They look weird. They're just like little eighth graders. Yep. That's so funny. (laughs) So that, that was actually kind of funny. Um, We had a brooder that, that we borrowed from a friend that was big, that that was good to have and they have to have the heat and all that stuff. But we had had it set up downstairs in our house because we wanted them to stay warm and all this stuff. And my friend at Agway, Lizzie Jenks was like, um, I don't think you should have it inside. I'm like, why? She's like, well, there's a dust thing. When I tell you there's a dust thing, when those little birds, those little girls start like flapping their wings and exercising, dust goes everywhere. So we had, we moved the brooder quickly to the garage. So yeah. yes, you can shelter it, but not in your house, Makes put sense. it in your garage. Cause I mean, the dust is absolutely, it just goes everywhere. You can't get rid of it. Um, and you, when you're going to build your coop, you know, they have these little coops that they sell that have like a tiny little run on them. I don't know who uses those for what, but chickens need at least uh, 10 feet square each per chicken, if not more, to really be like free ranging and whatnot. The, the more, the better. Um, we never let ours out of the run. There's a run and then there's a coop. We converted our shed into a coop, which was actually a very cool thing to do. Um, here's another tip. You want to have your roosts, the place where they're going to roost, higher than the place where, where you're going to have them lay eggs. Or they will try to roost in their nesting boxes and fill them with poop. Hmm. which is exactly what happened to me. So we're like, this is gross. We can't do this anymore. We had to fix that. So we learned about roosting and and boxes and all that stuff. Um, And how do you know when a chicken's about to lay an egg? Sarah, do you know how? I have no idea. I should have known. (laughs) <laughs> they make so much and you can understand I mean, if you're about to like pass something as big as your head through your privates you're gonna yeah. make some noise I right would, i would agree yep <laughs> and they do it every day that's the thing how many about. eggs are you get like how many chickens so, do you have we have nine chickens and most of them are up and running it takes them four to six months to get up and running to lay eggs and it was so exciting the first day that yeah. we had you know we found our first yeah. eggs and so we have all different kinds of chickens and i have some of our eggs here let's see them um so we have quite a variety so we've got this guy is from our, our americana this is our green egg i she like just that. started laying eggs so yeah. we, we know it's her because we only have one one chicken like that. Yeah. Um, a lot of them when they start are really quite small. This is I don't know if you can tell. This is yeah. this is a small egg. Yeah. This is a huge egg. Yeah. This is a monster. This you should have heard her singing before she laid that one. Um, because they're all kind of out of whack when they start. So sometimes yeah. you get these really small eggs, and then sometimes you get these massive ones, which are actually double yokers. So this is a oh, double yeah. yoker. Yeah. It's, it was, it's kind of funny. And they all di- different chickens lay different color eggs. 
So it's kind of fun to, yeah. to do that. There's a lot more to know about that. And, and the, the resources in the magazine are so good and they're so pretty. Yeah. Um, you, you, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. You, it, it's the circle of life and you need to understand all of that. Mm -hmm. um, my last pro tip would be on that circle of life piece. If you, <laughs> if you like to have your chickens be alive, um, I recommend actually buying them a week old. There is some loss in the first week of chicks. You think they're so cute, but sometimes some, there's destined not to make yeah. it. So one that, that's starting to get some weird feathers is probably going to be a more reliable one. And second way to keep your chickens alive is when you build your coop, you want to bury some um, like construction cloth or like, you know, wide screen under the edges of the coop. So nothing can dig in because you will become very popular with the local coyotes. and uh -huh. skunk Exactly. Yeah. With that. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know everything about chickens. I know a little bit. So far, my chickens are all still alive and they're laying. That's eggs. good. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, it's good. But I would <laughs> and recommend you got eggs. We, yeah, we've got eggs. That check out if you can check out that um that article in the Cape Cod Islands magazine. Hopefully it's still online. Yeah. And I found that Agway was such an incredible resource. And they have chicken specialists at yeah. each store. So they they're and they're so they they just want to help you too. That's yep. really quite fun. So do it, Sarah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. My aunt has chickens, so we go over there and we get the eggs. And oh, them. yeah. Why well, buy a chicken if you can get the eggs for free, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I believe that that is all we have this week. I think everybody knows what's good Cape Cod. So if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so you get notified anytime we drop a new episode. And if you're looking for more information about anything we talked about in this video or past videos, visit our website, whatsgoodcc.com.